Hey, what's up? Today, we're going to meet the media and find out how social media has impacted news gathering in the newsroom and out in the field. We'll be hearing from three active professionals in TV, radio, and newspaper talking about how social media and live streaming are transforming news gathering. Now, if you and I haven't met yet, I'm Carrie Shearer, the live stream expert. My background is in broadcast and marketing, video production, web videos, public information, emergency communications, and especially live streaming. I help agencies, entrepreneurs, and businesses get up to speed in the world of smartphone video production and live streaming. It's a really, really uh, just exploding field right now. I had the pleasure, though, of being on a live streaming panel at a Public Relations Society of America event in Sacramento. Now, with me on the panel were three reporters from TV, radio, and newspaper who had fascinating things to say about the impact that social media has been having on news gathering, how it is changing what happens in the newsroom, what gets on the air, and especially the demands it places on the reporters in the field. It is a huge change, and many of the veterans who maybe aren't interested in adapting to the new way of doing things are exiting the business. But others are adapting, and digital millennials are thriving in their native environment. Walt Gray from ABC 10 TV says reporters in the field are required to multitask to feed all the station's social media platforms. Well, you go out on your story as you always have, and as you're filing your TV story, you're also writing a story for the web. You're also uh, sending out tweets. You're also posting on Facebook, not only maybe on your personal Facebook, but also on the station's Facebook. You may want to Snapchat uh, or Instagram uh, a photo. So it's almost like a massive wave of stuff coming on you. You used to be able to focus on one thing. Now you have to serve many masters. I can remember uh, it was um, Jerry Brown had just won for governor and I'm at the reception and I'm about to interview him live and my phone is blowing up because the station wants me to start posting stuff on Twitter and Facebook and I'm like, can you give me a minute to interview who I'm supposed to be interviewing? But it was all these other responsibilities that are now part of it was totally interrupting what I'm there for, which was a live interview with the governor. We get so many pictures uh, and video clips uh, and, and ideas and pitches and it's more that we, I, I look at it as a plus. Uh, it, we go through all of these things. Is it newsworthy? A lot of them are pictures from a, a crime scene or an accident in outlying areas, a lightning strike, uh, a downed tree on top of a car. It could be a two hour drive from Sacramento. We can use that uh, and it's, it's like having another reporter out in the field. So a lot of it is very positive. We've seen a lot of citizen supplied footage on the air uh, through many of the horrific disasters that our country has experienced this year and last. We can only expect to see more footage from the public on the air with many newsrooms stretched for resources, fewer reporters doing more things. And as the public gets more experienced in how to shoot videos and get them to stations, it's critical to know that video needs to be shot horizontal, by the way, not vertical. It's got to be landscape for it to properly fit a broadcast TV format or even a regular computer screen. All right, now, Caitlin Lewis is a radio reporter with KFBK News Radio in Sacramento, where, coincidentally, I was also a reporter many years ago. Whereas legacy reporters might struggle a bit to learn the new technology, as a millennial, Caitlin is totally at home with all the changes to radio and, of course, social media. Just like TV, just like print right now, we're evolving. You have to be more than just your microphone because that's not the immediacy anymore. The immediacy is Facebook, it's Twitter, it's Instagram. You'd be surprised how many more people know me on social media than know me on the radio. Even our, our anchors right now are being told that they need to be on social media. When I go out to a story, I'm Facebook living it. I'm periscoping the whole event. I'm doing live shots from the scene on Facebook, which then is linked to my station's Facebook page, and then that's put up on our webpage. It is all about social media right now. 
if you think about it, the amount of people that are on social media rather than listening to a radio all the time. I mean, I'm on my phone all the time. Millennials are on our phone all the time. So you have a much bigger base. Whenever I do a story, I always tease the story on social media too, saying coming up at this specific time on KFBK at 93.1 FM, 1530 AM, I will have this story. But I always tease it on social media because that is the bigger base. And we have a bigger following on Twitter too. I mean, we have about 5,000 people following us on Twitter. So if they aren't on the radio station listening to us there, they're on Twitter and they're seeing what's coming up. It is stressful, but I think it comes down to efficiency and it comes down to just having a really clear head. My priorities when I get to the scene are first me. So I'm going to run around, get as much sound as I can. Then it's tweeting and Facebooking. I'll put out a number of videos, a number of Facebook posts. Whenever a PIO or someone at a crime scene comes up to me, my phone is in their faces, unfortunately. And it's recording things. It's Facebook living. It's periscoping to get that immediate information, which I will then cut up for sound bites to the listener through social media. So yeah, it's stressful, but it comes down to being good at your job, really, <laughs> in this new world. Finally, Kathy Anderson is a business reporter at the Sacramento Bee, a large newspaper owned by the McClatchy Company, which operates 29 newspapers in 14 states. Kathy says the unexpected result of the rise of social media integration with the newsroom is a tighter bond with readers. It's huge. I mean, I have to create an audience. I have to get to know my audience. And it's allowed me to do that in ways that I never really expected or um, some ways never really wanted. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, it's really cool because I'll run into people on the street and I'm like, hey, we're Facebook friends. And yeah. I'm all excited about it. So, And they are too. So I've, I've learned a lot about my readership. Uh, I've gotten ideas from them through social media. I've also been able to share other people's work that I think that they would be interested in. So it's been amazing. I think that when I was a young journalist and I thought I knew everything, I saw these other journalists there and they were struggling to adapt to just PCs. And now I have a change coming at me every single week. And it's important to be able to respond quickly to that as opposed to letting it pass you by. Because if you let it pass you by, you lose an opportunity to gain readers. And I really want to gain readers. I asked Kathy to tell the story of her experience with Pokemon Go, the app that just took America by storm almost overnight. She told me in her own humorous way about how she, a veteran reporter, got assigned a story by a newsroom intern. And guess what? It turned out to be a pretty good one. I love this story. Um, an intern came to my desk and he said, Kathy, it's just amazing how Pokemon Go has affected business. You really should do something on this. And that same day, I was contacted by someone who had a company and they all of a sudden had created this new app. Uh, it was called Pokemapper. So it max maps where all the Pokemonsters are all around the world. And so um, that person told me about it, and the intern had told me about it, and it just clicked to me, and I said, you know, Kathy, you really need to do this. Um, you really need to adapt. You really need to learn from this intern, and you really need to do this story. And I did, and it was one of the best read stories of the day. It was just amazing. I love that story now. So that's a look at how live streaming and social media are transforming news gathering. We are in the middle of a huge change in the way that media is being consumed. Will there be multiple local TV stations still broadcasting over the air in the future? Some think that there might not be, or the number of stations will be greatly reduced. We have newspapers who are posting video stories. We have radio stations who are airing video live streams through their social media platforms. TV stations giving continuous coverage of live events online. Well, it's all a part of what well done social media does best, and that is connecting viewers and listeners and readers with the on-air talent and giving them behind the scenes looks, helping them build that know, like, and trust factor that creates more rabid fans and more engaged fans. Hope you found this useful. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you'll visit me at kerryshearer.com. Look forward to talking soon.